Despite his denial, the rumours continue to circulate that Hugh Grant will be taking on the role as the next Doctor. However, a lot of people seem to forget that he has actually played that role before. If Grant is in line to play the next Doctor, then he wouldn't be the first actor to have appeared in some form beforehand. Peter Capaldi and Colin Baker both had roles in the series before eventually being cast as the Doctor. But it's not the 6th and 12th Doctors that this list is interested in. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with Who Culture and here are 10 Doctor Who guest actors who also played the Doctor. Number 10. David Warner David Warner was reportedly Steven Spielberg's suggestion to play the Doctor in the TV movie, but it is said that the actor did not want to be tied down to a long-running series. Warner finally made an appearance in the series proper in Cold War, a minor and some might say disappointing role in an episode written by his friend Mark Gatiss. The two had previously played the Doctor and Master respectively in the Big Finish audio series entitled Symphony for the Devil, which was released as part of the Unbound series during Doctor Who's 40th anniversary year. Each play followed a what if Doctor story, such as what if the Valiard had won, or in Warner's case, what if the Doctor had not become Unit's scientific advisor. Jonathan Clement's story saw this third Doctor accidentally sent to Hong Kong in 1997 instead of England 1970. He finds his old friend the Brigadier running a bar in the city after being dishonourably discharged from Unit, and the two join together to fight the Master and some alien parasites. It's a really good Doctor Who story, and Warner was so good in the role that he has returned to play the so-called Unbound Doctor in numerous Big Finish audios. Number 9. Arabella Weir Arabella Weir made a brief appearance in the 2011 Christmas special The Doctor, the Widow and the Wardrobe. However, years earlier, again in Big Finish's Unbound series, she played the second female Doctor. The first being Joanna Lumley, of course. Exile, written by Nicholas Briggs, is another alternative Doctor Who reality, but a much more controversial one. Again, the Doctor is exiled to Earth due to some offence committed against the Time Lords. But this female Doctor is an alcoholic who works in a supermarket, rather than the smart, dashing hero with a military contract. But more controversially, the Doctor's female incarnation is a punishment doled out by the Time Lords due to the previous incarnation committing suicide. It's nobody's finest hour. And for those who have issues with Stephen Moffat's writing for female characters, you should probably give this one a wide berth. Number 8. David Banks David Banks is best known as the 1980s cyber leader, but he also played the Doctor for two performances of the stage show Doctor Who The Ultimate Adventure. As well as starring as the snarling mercenary Carl, Banks was an understudy for third Doctor John Pertwee, who was touring the show around the UK. Pertwee fell ill and so Banks had to play the role for two nights, with his Doctor later being dubbed the Greenpeace Doctor owing to his choice of clothing, a Greenpeace t-shirt, beige coat, trousers and a brown hat, which were probably just the clothes that Banks happened to be wearing that day. As it was a live show, it's difficult to tell what unique spin he put on the character, which was clearly written with John Pertwee in mind. The Ultimate Adventure, written by Terence Dix, is a weird mixture of Doctor Who, Pantomime and a West End musical, but it does have some accidental references to future Doctor Who, most notably Madame Delilah, a slightly criminal, slightly untrustworthy woman who falls for the Doctor and ends up sacrificing her life to save him. Hello sweetie, indeed. Number 7. Derek Jacobi Derek Jacobi's master was one of the great surprises of the Russell T Davies era. He'd played the character before, of course, in that ill-fated Scream of the Schalke series, but here he was, albeit briefly, as a decidedly menacing master. Of course, a brief cameo is no barrier to future roles in Doctor Who, and Jacobi has been playing the character for Big Finish since 2017. Jacobi had previously worked with Big Finish, however, most notably back in 2003 as part of their Unbound series. Deadline, the play in which Jacobi stars as Martin Bannister, technically isn't a Doctor Who story, but rather about the absence of Doctor Who. Set in an alternate reality where Doctor Who never made it past the pilot, Jacobi's character is the aging and confused writer of that first episode. As the play goes on, Bannister starts to believe that he himself is the Doctor, and listeners get to hear Jacoby perform alternate versions of scenes from The Unearthly Child and The Daleks. 
It's a dark and melancholic tale of twisted opportunities and dashed dreams. And it also suggests that life is just that little bit brighter with Doctor Who in it. Number 6. Trevor Martin Trevor Martin played one of the trio of Time Lords that exiled the second Doctor to Earth at the end of the War Games, offering him a new face. It was surprising not to find Martin's own face there, considering that only a few years later he would be playing the character on stage. Terence Dix wrote Doctor Who and the Daleks in The Seven Keys to Doomsday as a vehicle for the departing John Pertwee. But unfortunately, the actor was unavailable, and so Trevor Martin was cast as an alternative fourth Doctor. It is essentially a chase quest for seven crystals that the Daleks will use to control all life in the universe. Wendy Padbury, who had previously starred as Zoe, also appears as the Doctor's companion, Jenny. Martin said that he was harassed by youths on the tube during the run of the show due to his long effeminate hair, but he did return to the role in 2008 in the Big Finish audio adaptation of the play. Martin's casting is an interesting bridge between the end of the Troughton era, when the series was close to cancellation, and the end of the Pertwee era, when the show was popular enough to warrant a West End stage show. Number 5. David Troughton Both of Patrick Troughton's sons have had guest roles in Doctor Who and played their father's incarnation of the character on audio. David Troughton, however, is the more prolific guest star of the two. He was an extra in The Enemy of the World, appeared alongside his father in the second Doctor's final story, The War Games, and starred as the King of Peladon alongside John Pertwee. He was also a former flatmate of Sixth Doctor actor Colin Baker, and memorably stole the show from Peter Davidson in a very peculiar practice. Troughton returned to the series in the David Tennant episode Midnight as Professor Hobbs. A few years after that, and he would be cast as the second Doctor in a series of Doctor Who audios centred around Tom Baker's fourth Doctor. It was a great performance, and the fact that he didn't sound exactly like his father only added to the mystery of the character. He would then go on to read some audiobooks of second Doctor stories for the BBC. Interestingly, in the 1990s, he was actually considered as a replacement for Sylvester McCoy's seventh Doctor, when the New Virgin Adventures range wanted to regenerate him, and a photo shoot was even commissioned for reference, until the BBC vetoed the idea. Number 4. Nicholas Briggs Before he was the voice of the Daleks, and even before his work with Big Finish, Nicholas Briggs was the Doctor. He played the character over four series of fan-made audios from 1985 to 1993. His version of the Doctor was such a big part of the fabric of the fandom at the time that he even made appearances in the Doctor Who magazine comic strip. Dressed as a 1920s gentleman, Briggs' Doctor had an obsession with tea and classical literature, which is exactly what people thought Doctor Who was at the time. The Nth Doctor, as he is sometimes known, made his first appearance in Doctor Who magazine comic strip called Party Animals, where it's hinted that he is a future incarnation of the 7th Doctor when the two meet at an intergalactic birthday party. However, Briggs's Doctor would become an even larger part of Doctor Who canon when, in 1998, the comic strip appeared to kill off Paul McGann's 8th Doctor in a story entitled The Final Chapter. After being mortally wounded in defeating a cabal of Gallifreyan zealots, the Doctor regenerates into Nicholas Briggs. It's one of the great Doctor Who comic strip arts of the 1990s. Number 3. Lenny Henry Lenny Henry played the villainous tech mogul Daniel Barton in the Series 12 two-part story Spyfall. He made a great Doctor Who villain, and it's rather promising that he abruptly exited stage right as soon as the Master's plan fell apart. Could he be one of the forces being drawn back for the 13th's final adventure? Who knows? Prior to his appearance in Doctor Who, Lenny Henry had been vocal about the lack of a black actor in the lead role. Back in the 1980s, Henry became the first black Doctor on an episode of his sketch show. It's a fairly standard Doctor Who spoof, with gags about technobabble, running down corridors, and the Doctor and companion wanting to have sex with each other. That's actually the best gag in the sketch, which suggests that family-friendly Doctor Who was taken off the air in 1985 so that the Doctor and Perry could get it on with each other. Lenny Henry's Doctor is dressed rather brilliantly as a cross between John Shaft and Rupert the Bear, which is as good a description of the character as any other. And in retrospect, the sketch is archly satirical, with the evil Thatchos, a Cyberman dressed as Maggie Thatcher, automating all jobs in the year 2010. Number 2. Richard E. Grant 
Richard E. Grant played the great intelligence, the big bad of Doctor Who's Series 7B, which led to the 50th anniversary special in 2013. And given his history with Doctor Who, it's easy to see why Grant was the perfect choice for a vengeful villain. Richard E. Grant had played the Doctor twice before first being cast in 2012's The Snowmen. When Rowan Atkinson's ninth Doctor was killed during Stephen Moffat's comic relief sketch, he regenerated into Richard E. Grant, or as written, the slightly handsome Doctor. It was a one-night-only charity gig that surely allowed Moffat and the comic relief team to scratch the itch of which 90s actors could play the Doctor if the series was still on. Four years later, Grant was cast as the ninth Doctor in Scream of the Schalke, a 40th anniversary animated web series for the BBC's website. It was written by Paul Cornell, and the Doctor is clearly recovering from a terrible loss that has occurred off-screen. Meeting a new companion, it appears that he will gradually become the Doctor again. Unbeknownst to the team of the Scream of Schalke, Russell T Davies was also devising a ninth Doctor who was also dealing with a tragedy in his past, and when the new TV show was announced, the Schalke Doctor was quietly set aside. Number 1. Mark Gatiss Mark Gatiss is one of the revised series' most prolific guest stars and writers. Since the show returned in 2005, Gatiss has written nine Who episodes, written for nine separate Doctors across various media, and starred as four very different characters in the TV series. But he has also been the Doctor in his own right. For one night only back in 1999, the same year that Hugh Grant played the Doctor, Gatiss wrote three comedy sketches for BBC Two's Doctor Who Night. The second of these, entitled The Web of Caves, is an affectionate spoof of 60s Doctor Who. Landing on an alien planet, the Doctor is constantly doorstopped by aliens who aren't particularly villainous. The aliens are played with relish by Little Britain's David Walliams and UK comedy stalwart Paul Putner, who wear daft blonde wigs and silvery costumes. They're desperate for the Doctor to defeat them, but fail at each hurdle, as the aliens' evil plots are repeatedly shot down by the Doctor. It's been attempted, but I suppose I better stop you. What a catchphrase! Print that on the 2023 Doctor Who calendar! And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other examples, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.